Hello everybody and welcome to the vloggy thing and this is kind of a blend between the vloggy thing and chrono plays because this is an addendum to my previous video about the Samsung Gear VR. It is a video reply to slash 310579. That's the username. And slash was nice enough to put a rather large comment in bringing up a bunch of points that I either missed, forgot in the multiple recordings that I did with this, or just didn't know about. So I'm going, I feel that these answers sh are more important than just what's, you know, than just throwing up a comment and just calling it a day. So I'm putting up a video response because other people should probably be seeing these points as well. Um, so, Let's get started. Number one. At the very beginning, I pointed out that it was really sweet of Samsung to include the micro SD card with all of the software pre installed. Uh, slash points out you don't need the SD card at all to get started. You can skip that SD card part at the beginning. I did not know this at the time. I read the instruction manual, and that is 100% true. There's apparently a skip button somewhere in there that I didn't see. Uh, but when I first got it, I flipped through the instruction manual far enough to get to plug in the Note 4 to the Gear VR, and then it will autom auto audibly tell you to unplug it from the Gear VR and follow the instructions on the screen. And I put down the instruction manual. If I had kept reading the instruction manual like two pages later, it actually points out that you can skip it. You don't have to have the SD card. Um... And apparently, if I was actually paying attention to the screen on the Note 4, I would have seen the skip button. But the instructions told me to pull out the SD card and put in the one from the Gear VR. So I did, just without any question, because I kind of expected it to do that. So I didn't look further into it. So I did miss, miss that. Uh, the software from the Gear VR will automatically download from the Samsung website, so you don't have to have the micro SD card. It's just really nice that it does because a lot of the demo stuff is already there. Um, there's a lot of like 3D videos, trailers, and stuff like that that I didn't find on the Samsung store. So it's possible that they're only available on the SD card or it's possible that you have to find them elsewhere that I just haven't found yet. Um, Either way, it is really awesome that Samsung included that micro SD card and the option to install the software separately if you lose the micro SD card. Um, I'm still going to keep my micro SD card as is, but now it's mostly because I'm a collector and that's how I do things. Uh, also in the video, I pointed out that the Gear VR is only available for the Note 4 and not really available for all Note 4s. Slash responds with all Snapdragon Note 4s with update build number ANK4, which I've got to pause for a second. Does that actually mean that there are Note 4s that don't have the Snapdragon processor? Or is, or is just Slash being very specific? It's possible. Um, anyways, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. That's a legitimate question. That's not me questioning what is said. That's that's a legitimate question. Um, anyways, all Snapdragon Note 4s with update build number ANK4 work with Gear VR. Okay. And yes, that means also in Canada, Germany, etc. Everywhere the Snapdragon is sold and the update ANK4 was released. Only the Xenos version doesn't have the update yet but will probably by the end of January, early February. Okay. Um, I don't have contacts in every country that Samsung does its business in. I can only go off the news reports that I read, and this wasn't really that big of an importance to me, so I didn't dig too terribly deeply into it. Uh, but the news report that I read specifically stated that the Gear VR only works with the update for the Gear VR, which is probably this ANK4 update that Slash speaks of. And the update is only available in markets where the Gear VR has been released. 
Um, apparently that is partially true. At least it's heavily suggested in slash comments that that's only partially true. Some places don't have the update. Some places do. And the way this comment is written, it is suggested that the update is available in markets that don't have the gear VR. Um, okay. Uh, your results may vary apparently. <laughs> which is pretty much common for just about everything from TV shows to movies to technology. Your results may vary depending on what country and sometimes even what part of the country you're in, which actually kind of sucks. I can, I can partially understand Windows when it comes to hardware, but when it comes to software and movies and TV shows, I never understood window released. And anyways, moving on. Um, as I was going over the technology of the Gear VR, I had kind of glossed over the controls, uh, the touchpad here, the back button, and the volume rockers. Um, I had pointed out that there was tap function and there was swipe forward and swipe backwards. Uh, Slash points out that there is also swipe up and swipe down. And yes, that's absolutely true. However, it's not used all that often. Uh, it's probably just, it's not needed. So they didn't actually put it in there in certain places. Uh, it's used in the 3D picture viewer. You can swipe up and swipe down to select different types of pictures from landscapes to under the ocean, which is what's available on the SD card anyways. Um, and it's used when reading the description of the apps. You swipe down and swipe up to scroll up and down through the description. Um, but... That does kind of also point out another huge advantage of the Gear VR. It's not just limited to swipe forward, swipe back, up, down, and tap. With programming, this thing could respond to circle inputs or zigzag inputs, or if they really wanted to, they could put a mouse cursor on the screen and use the touchpad to control the mouse cursor. It's limited purely by the software, and that's it. So that means that this thing actually has more potential than what we're seeing. Uh, of course, potential just means a thing that's not implemented. Usually there's a yet involved in there, but as of right now, it's not implemented, so it kind of can't be taken into account. But yes, there is all up and down swiping. Um, four, I, had, I was playing with the Oculus Cinema. Uh, I pointed out the Oculus Cinema, and I pointed out that it was a little bit limited because it can only access videos in certain specific folders. Uh, I was specifically referencing the My Videos folder that's on the SD card. There are two other folders that the uh, Oculus Cinema program accesses, and that's for trailers and multi-screen videos. Uh, but I didn't care about them because I cared about my videos. I wanted to know what videos I could put on there and what videos it could play. Uh, the videos that are already on there are in MP4 format, and I was mildly curious what other formats it could play. I haven't dug too terribly deeply into it, but I know it can play MKV files, at least the rip of Ashens and the Quest for the Game Child that I made. Uh, but I had pointed out that it was limited because it can't access the network. It can only access that one specific folder on the SD card. Slash says, from upcoming services like Little Star, Milk VR, and MGO Advanced, video content and movies can be streamed. And besides, you can use the 32 gig of the Note 4 and up to 128 gig of external SD card for storage of video content, which is quite all right. Uh, let's start with the upcoming apps. They're upcoming. They're not available right now, so I'm not taking them into account. Uh, there are promises. There's a lot of potential. But again, that's all it is. It's just potential. Until it comes out, it's just going to be potential. Just like energy in science class. It's potential energy until it's actually used. But until it's actually used, it's still just a potential. Um, video... Uh, and besides, you can use the 32 gig of the Note 4, and he's uh, slash is referencing the internal storage, not the SD card. That is not the case. The Oculus Cinema cannot access the internal storage. I don't know why. It, that's a limitation of the software that might be added in an update. 
but it is a limitation of that specific software. The Android operating system on the Note 4 can access all of my videos. If I go to File Manager, it actually has up at the top nice little categories, my videos, my pictures, my documents, that kind of thing, and it goes out and it finds all of them for me. I don't have to go hunt for them. So the operating system already knows how to do that. It's just the software itself that's specifically looking in that folder. Um, so it can't use the 32 gig of internal storage. And yes, the external SD card can go up to 128 gig, but 128 gig is not a lot, okay? Um, I have a five terabyte hard drive that I use to store my media collection. But yeah, okay, what I could do is take all of the stuff off the SD card and put what I want to watch on it, and then I have it for long trips and stuff like that. But that is extra mental uh, calculations that you have to do. You have to take the extra steps to take the stuff off and put new stuff on every time you want to watch something. Uh, and if you're in your house, you know, you're just at home, your Wi Fi is available, your network's right there, you could just stream it over the network. That's an extra little inconvenience that you have to do. That's a mental transaction that you have to do that makes the value that much less. Uh, when these other services that are spoken of, the Little Star, Milk VR, and MGO, when they come out, yeah, it's going to be valuable. Um, I personally hope that Plex or XBMC output software that can do that because I have servers set up for both of those, and that would be really awesome if it did. Hell, I use XBMC and Plex already on this phone, so adding it to the functionality of the Gear VR would be absolutely amazing. And I really would not be surprised if somebody does put a Plex app into the Gear VR. Uh, I would be surprised if somebody does that with XBMC, just because XBMC just seems to be the base software ported to different platforms. Um, so I would be surprised if somebody puts the extra effort into making it 3D. Um, but yes, uh, that's all potential. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the next one I was also mentioning while I was fiddling with the Oculus Cinema that the screen dooring effect seems to be more prominent than the uh, Oculus Rift DK2. And if I didn't add this part, I should have. I should have added that, statistically speaking, it shouldn't be more noticeable because the uh, Oculus Rift DK2 has a screen from a Samsung Note 3, which is a 1080p screen, so 1920 by 1080, whereas the Gear, well, as the Note 4 has a 1440p screen, so 2560 by 1440 and so the screen dooring should be less noticeable uh, but I realized this very recently like maybe a half an hour ago the reason that I think that I notice it more is actually because of the functionality of this little knobby right here that I praise so highly in the video the focus so I don't need to use my glasses um, because the Oculus Rift is limited in its focus, it has three cups for the original Oculus Rift and two cups for the DK2, so they don't match my eyes. That means everything I'm seeing is blurred. However, because I can focus this individually to my eyes, that means I'm seeing everything sharper. That's why I'm noticing the screen dooring more on the Gear VR. It's because it works better than the Oculus Rift. And I, it totally, totally didn't occur to me until probably about a half an hour ago when I was thinking about all of this. Yeah, so um, anyways, uh, so yes, most people will probably say that the screen dooring effect is better on the Gear VR than on the DK2 because statistically speaking, there it should be. There are more pixels per inch uh, so it should look better. However, I'm noticing it more because my eyes suck. 
and the Gear VR is much better accommodating to shitty eyes. So, oddly, that's a limitation on my part. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so, yeah, the, the reason that I'm saying it's a limitation on my part, and I probably should clarify this, uh, because it is actually kind of a mental jump to get there. People who can see normally will see the Oculus Rift screen dooring for exactly what it is. Whereas for me, because I can't see normally, it's blurred for me. So I see the screen dooring less because all of the pixels are all blurred together. Whereas on the Gear VR, people with normal vision are still seeing it normally. And because it can focus, now I'm seeing it normally. So I'm seeing it in focus. So yes, that's a limitation on my part. Um, slash continues by saying, and the screen in the Oculus Cinema can show videos with resolution up to 720p. And that may be true, but in the long run, it doesn't matter. Just because the PS4 can output 1080p doesn't mean that my old CRT 4x3 TV that I plug into the PS4, just because I can see the screen on there doesn't mean that that TV is outputting 1080p. It just means that the PS4 is downscaling it for that shitty ass TV. Um, and for the record, I actually have no idea if the PS4 has that ability. It might, but I've never played with it. I've just been using HDMI. Um, anyways, continuing that thought process, let's do some quick, just off the top of our heads, math. Um, the screen for the Note 4 is... 2560 by 1440. Okay, so that should be way more than enough to put a 720p screen in. That is actually, should theoretically be enough to have four 720p screens. Okay, well, we have to split that in half because we have one half for one eye and one half for the other eye. So that means you got 1280 by 1440. Well, that's okay too because 1280 by 720 is 720p. So 1280 should be enough to do 720p. However, if you actually watch the screen when you're not actually looking at it through the Gear VR, like if you're watching the, the, the video, uh, you can see that there's actually black borders around the video itself. So there's that many pixels that you're just that aren't even being displayed. So we're losing pixels. So now we're already under 720p. And there's another interesting little thing that I didn't even notice uh, until I was actually making this video, the, well, the last video. Uh, I noticed that when I shook my head, when I moved my head quickly, there was like a jitter, okay? Uh, imagine those videos that you've seen about the, the, the Bigfoot walking through the field that were stabilized. You'll see the Bigfoot staying put, but you'll see the screen moving around it. So you'll see like black moving around Bigfoot. Uh, that is a stabilized screen. And that is seems to be what's happening in the Oculus Rift. Um, now, what I'm about to say is just a guess. I don't know if it's 100% true, but my guess is that there's software in the setup that will move the screen because the GPU can't keep up with the accelerometer. Basically, you can turn your head faster than the GPU can turn the whole, you know, the game, the 3D rendering. So there is, so the software in the Gear VR is accommodating for that by actually moving the screen itself to keep what you what keep what you're looking at stable, um, which is a really cool trick. And uh, it helps with motion sickness because if you turn your head and then there's a slight delay until the game turns, uh, that that is one of the things that causes severe motion sickness. So because they took care of that is really nice. I, I'm really grateful, but I never noticed it until I was actually looking at an outputted video. So that means that when I'm looking at it through the Gear VR, there's a chunk of the screen that can be taken up by that jitter that's not that you're not seeing so that's that many less pixels that you have access to on top of all of that in the cinema software you're not 
it, the screen itself is not taking up your entire field of view. Um, you can see parts of the above, parts of below, parts of each side. Uh, now, in the cinema version itself, it, the screen is big enough where you actually have to look around at the cinema, so mm, there's that. But because of how the cinema is set up, you're seeing even less pixels than are what really what are really available. Plus, there's the lensing effect, which makes the pixels stand out more. And basically what I'm saying is that what you're seeing on the screen is not 720p. Even if the video is 720p, what you're seeing on the screen is not. You're not seeing it at 720p. You're seeing it at significantly lower. I would assume just by anecdotal experience, so this, is, this isn't scientific or anything like this, this is just what I'm seeing, I would assume that the available pixels to this Oculus Cinema screen itself are actually less than a 480p screen because I was watching the DVD of um, Ashens in the Quest for the Game Child and it looked to me to be lower resolution. Now, I would assume that it was because of the screen dooring problem and the lensing effect that's causing the pixels to actually warp. Now, the software is taking care of that and actually warping it on the screen, so you're seeing it properly, but the pixels themselves appear warped and stretched, so it's, you're not getting the full resolution. You're not, get, you're not seeing HD at all. Um, you're gonna have to. We're gonna have to up the screen significantly to get actual HD video. And no matter what you really do, you're going to have that limitation. Even in the 3D, you know, the full 3D videos, you're not going to be seeing that at HD uh, because it's limited by the hardware. You're limited by what the hardware, what you can see through the hardware, and what the hardware is outputting. Um, so yeah, you're not seeing HD. It doesn't matter if it can play HD, you're not seeing HD. All right. Uh, next up on the list, I had pointed out that the Gear VR, the software inside of it, the side of the Note 4 anyways, can know, knows when you're turning your head or when you're, you know, which, whichever way you turn your head, it's noticing. However, it doesn't notice when you go forwards or backwards. Uh, again, if I didn't add this, I probably should have, but I postulated that it was a limitation of the software and the hardware. It would be extremely difficult for the Note 4 to track forward and backwards um, outside of using the accelerometer, and the accelerometer is not 100%. It's probably not enough to do it properly. Uh, left, right, and rotating, there are software tricks that can be done, but forward and backwards, not so much. Um, so what would probably need to happen is either there would have to be an added piece of hardware to the Gear VR or the Note 4 itself to be able to recognize uh, depth. Or a massive, massive amount of coding would have to go into it to use the one camera that's in the Note 4. The Oculus Rift DK2 gets around this problem by having LEDs, uh, infrared LEDs, at a very specific distance apart from each other. So the software that's accessing the camera that's seeing the LEDs knows exactly how many are supposed to be there, exactly where they should be, and exactly how far apart they are. So it, all it does is it takes how far apart they are and then looks at the camera and sees how far apart they appear, and now it knows exactly how far apart you are or how far away you are from the camera. You know, simple geography. Geometry. Yeah, simple geometry. Um, the Wii does exactly the same thing. The sensor bar has no sensors in it. All it has is two LED lights. The Wiimote has an infrared camera that sees the sensors, and then the software on the Wii itself goes, okay, I see it as this far apart. That means that the Wiimote itself is 
exactly this far away from the screen. Um, and the Kinect and the whatever it is called with the PS4, the, the, the PS4 eye camera? No, that was for the PS2 one. Ah, whatever. But anyways, the, the Kinect and the PS4 camera do it slightly different. They actually have 3D vision. Basically, they can see depth. There are two cameras on each of them. And base, all it does is do exactly the same thing that your brain does to see depth. And it takes the slight difference from this picture and the slight difference from this picture and compares the two. And now it knows exactly how far away you are from the camera. Math. Just uh, just math. That's, that's all it is. Um, the Note 4 does not have that ability. So it's going to be limited on what it can do. Hopefully they can add it in a software update but it probably won't happen. Uh, slash responds to that particular thought with, inside out positional tracking will come to the Gear VR, probably the version for Note 5. And that's a very distinct possibility. Uh, the Note 5 itself might have extra pieces of hardware so we can th see in 3D. Um, I, I mean, fuck, all they'd have to do is put another camera on there, technically. Uh, do it like you have with the, the, the 3DS, where there's just two cameras on it. And then not only do you have depth tracking for the Gear VR, but you can also take 3D pictures, which is actually kind of cool. That's actually kind of a cool idea. Or they could add some kind of proximity sensors to the Gear VR itself. Uh, it's possible. However, this brings up a limitation of the Gear VR. Uh, if that is the case, because we know that the Gear VR is limited to a very specific phone, that means that when the next version of the Gear VR comes out, I'm going to have to update to it to keep up with the software. And I point out the Oculus Rift as proof of that. Okay, The DK, DK2 has the depth perception, whereas the DK1 does not. Now, to use... DK2 software, you have to have the DK2. You can't use the DK1. So if the Note 5 has the extra functions, I have to update to the Note 5. Even if they put it on the Gear VR 2, that probably means that the Gear VR 2 will only work with their latest and greatest phone. Thus, I would have to buy their latest and greatest phone as well as the Gear VR 2. So that makes this that much less worth it because in a year, the next version is going to come out and this is going to become worthless or at least damn near worthless. And it's going to suck. We're going to fracture the market. You know, the big, huge thing that everybody feared about when the uh, Android came out. Uh, but it is going to fracture the market. It's going to break things. And it's just people just aren't going to buy the next one if they buy this one. Because if you think about if people think about it f far enough in advance and they think that this is a possibility, then they're not going to buy it. Um, so that's something to think about. So that, that's actually kind of an important thing to think about and kind of not good and kind of disappointing when you're somebody like me and you're a collector and you kind of want to get all of the things. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, but that's just another thing that lowers the value when you compare it to the price, and the price is pretty steep. Uh, okay, in another part of the video, I pointed out that the App Store was limited, and everything seemed to be demos. Um, I should have added on that this is early, and, you know, they will they will be adding stuff, but... We can only compare to what we have right now. What it comes in the future are just promises, and promises don't mean anything until they become a reality. Um, so as of right now, the store is incredibly limited, and everything seems to be demos. Uh, Slash points out that Darknet is the full game, which it is. I did totally forget that. It is a full game, and all of the apps seem to be 100% full. They don't seem to be uh, demos or limited in any way outside of the fact that there's just not that much content for them yet, but everything else seem, does seem to be demos. Um, 
Slash points out that every Tuesday new content will be released, which is cool, and it was, so Samsung is building up their credibility. Uh, but understandably, some developers wait with their apps till the retail store has launched, which tell which which is probably true. I it doesn't appear that there is any kind of pay option in the Samsung store. But that means that the software is not ready yet. They released the hard hardware before the software was ready. That makes it slightly less valuable right now. Uh, it's got potential, but again, potential doesn't mean anything until it becomes reality. So to get developers to put their stuff on the store, you have to have the market. But to have the market, you have to have the apps. So Samsung is kind of in a catch-22 position right now. So they've got to quickly, and they probably are trying, quickly release the full version of the store. Uh, hopefully they do, and hopefully they do very quickly. Um, because, like I said, this has a lot of potential. And since I've already bought it, I would like to see the potential fulfilled. I really, really would. I don't want this to turn into another Xbox Connect where it has a hell of a lot of potential, but nobody ever used it, and it turned out to be a worthless piece of crap. <clears throat> Anyways, moving along. Uh, I had commented about how I would like the Google Cardboard app to be usable with the Gear VR, and I hope that someday Samsung will open up their Gear VR to allow Cardboard to access the Gear VR hardware itself. Um, it will uh, Slash points out, you can use the cardboard apps with the Gear VR by either putting the Note 4 in the Gear VR but loosen the USB stick a bit that it doesn't snap in 100%. And what he's referencing is actually something that I've already found out about. I figured I, I that was one of the first things that I did with the Gear VR was try to figure out how to use it with Google Cardboard since I can't use Google Cardboard with a giant ass Note 4. Uh, and the suggestion was that you take the USB port, pull it back, slide the Note 4 underneath it, and then snap it into place. And then you can use the Google Cardboard and you get the optics. Obviously, the controls don't work, but they wouldn't work in the cardboard anyways. However, the problem comes with the USB port now becomes the structure point. Okay? And the Note 4 is pushing against the USB port. And that brings risk to the USB port. You risk damaging the port. Now, I didn't point this out in the video because I have a hope that it's just a manufacturer defect, but the USB port on mine doesn't work that well to begin with. Uh, I have to shake it a little bit and fiddle with the phone a little bit to get the contacts to connect and to get the phone to notice that it's plugged into the Gear VR. Once it does notice, it works fine, but it doesn't seem to notice right off the bat, and I have to shake it a little bit. Um, again, I hope that that's just a manufacturing defect in this very specific Gear VR, and it's not actually a problem for anybody else, and until I hear otherwise, I'm going to assume as such. But... That does bring up a huge possibility about damaging the USB port. If mine is already broken, that means that it won't take that much to break others. So jamming it in like that is probably not a good thing. Um, so yeah, that's not going to work very well. The other suggestion he gives is... Or when the Note 4 is rooted, you can use an app like Quarantine to freeze the Oculus app when needed. And that would work, except for one problem. Well, a couple problems with that. It, one, rooting your phone is another mental transaction that you have to do. It's another inconvenience that the end user has to deal with, making things slightly less valuable. Um, also, rooting the phone voids the warranty okay now you can hide it you can unroot it and all that fun crap but if if samsung ever finds out that you rooted the phone that they will not honor their warranty because they they'll say stuff about unauthorized software and crap like that 
uh, even if it's a hardware problem, they will claim it's unauthorized software and not honor the warranty. Um, I don't want to have to worry about this. This is a very, very expensive phone. If the hardware fails for one reason or the other, I want the warranty to be valid. So I don't even want to risk it. Um, like I, I know with the Nexus One, that was a big thing. Uh, you, Google made it very easy to root the Nexus One, but one of the big things that they warned you about is that it will void your warranty. Um, I also did it with the, uh, the Nexus 4, and I probably eventually will with the Note 4. Probably about the same time that Cyanogen mod comes out for the Note 4, if it's not out already and I just haven't seen it. Um, but until there is massively more value in rooting my phone, I'm not going to do it. Uh, and a lot, a lot, a lot of other people just straight up won't do it. So I, my, my plea to Samsung to allow the Google Cardboard software to work with the Gear VR is still valid. I still hope that someday Samsung will at least allow me to access the Google Cardboard app from inside the Oculus app. Ooh, I hope. I wish. But, you know, whatever. Uh, moving along again. Um, I also hoped that Samsung would allow the Oculus software to work with other phones. Uh, to open it up so that other manufacturers can make their own version of the... Uh, did I say cardboard? No, I meant the Oculus software, Samsung to allow the Oculus software to work with other phones, to open it up, to allow other manufacturers to make their version, their own versions of the Gear VR to work with their own phones. So like Motorola can make their own Gear VR to work with their Motorola phone and the Oculus software will work with that. That would add value to the, uh, the uh, market and I said that if they don't do that, then they should probably keep the market free. Actually, I think I was pretty adamant on that, and I think I squared. But uh, I, I hold to that. If I'm going to be forced to buy their hardware, the software better be free. I don't want to be spending, you know, over $1,000 for this thing and then have to go spend more money to buy applications for it. It's microtransactions basically now if they opened it up and allowed anybody to use it like the play store and the google cardboard store that already exists um yeah then that i will accept but if it's just limited to very very specific samsung phones i will be far far less likely to buy anything on the samsung store and developers are going to know that so they're going to be less likely to put their apps up on the store. Okay? So this is a business warning to Samsung. Open it up. The more open, the bigger the market, the more users you can potentially have, the more likely people are going to put stuff on your store, and the more users you will have, and the more money you will make, because more people will be buying stuff on the store. Not everybody can pay for your expensive-ass phone. Whew. Anyways, um, Slash says there will be more Gear VRs for other phones, but of course only for upcoming Galaxy S and Galaxy Note phones, where everything is optimized for them, but all can access the same Oculus Store platform. Again, keep the Oculus Store the same, but open up the software itself that runs it to let other manufacturers, you know, optimize it for their phones. Samsung will have the lead. They will have the heads up. They will have the marketing ploy of, we did it first. That means we know what the hell we're doing and our phones work better with the software. Their phones probably won't work as well. I'm still saying, open it up. Open up the platform. Uh, you can have the same, you can run the Oculus store. That's fine. Uh, I have no argument about that. But opening up the software to be used on different phones would be really, really nice. Um, yeah, so, hmm. Uh, I also pointed out that the Gear VR has a severe limitation because it's going to be locked down by Samsung. Uh, and the Oculus Rift itself is not going to be locked down. 
And Slash says, how do you know that the Oculus CV1 won't be locked down? One, because we already seen that it's not. The DK1 and the DK2 aren't locked down. The API is open to anybody. I have the API and I didn't pay a damn cent for it. The API is open to anybody. And the main reason that we know that the Oculus Rift is going to be open to anybody is because, well, it's open to porn right now. And that's kind of the big kicker. That's uh, that's kind of why VHS went out over Betamax way back in the day is because porn went to VHS and everyone went to VHS for the porn. So, um, yeah, the porn's going to follow the Oculus Rift because it's already there. It, it's It's been there. Uh, but the CV-1... I can almost 100% guarantee that it's going to be open because, one, it doesn't make good business sense to lock it down because, again, the more software you have for it, the more users you're going to have and the more people that you're going to buy it. Oculus is in the business of selling the hardware, the screen and the input. They're not in the business of selling software. Samsung, as far as I know of, is also in the business of selling hardware, not software, but it's still locked down. It's locked down to the Samsung store. It's not open. Like, you know, I can't just throw another app on it. It's locked down. So um, where, where I know that the Gear VR is locked down because Samsung controls the hardware, controls the software, controls the gear. They control everything, beginning to end, front to back. They control everything. So they lock it down. Uh, Oculus Rift controls the screen and the input. And that's it. They don't control anything else. And even if they tried to, they don't control your PC. Somebody's going to hack it very quickly. And because it's a PC, it's significantly easier to make it a double-click fix. So basically, you download a piece of software, you'd, and it's, you, your Oculus Rift is now open. So there's no real point in locking down the Oculus Rift. Now, it is technically possible that Oculus Rift will be locked down. They can put DRM in, and they can lock it down to some Oculus store. I just really, really don't think that they will. Um, mostly because they've already proven... You know, they've already built up their credibility, something that Samsung has yet to do. Uh, they're just starting, and they're doing a very good job. I'm just pointing that out. But Oculus Rift is already much farther along that path. Uh, so I trust Oculus Rift more than I trust Samsung right now. Give it time. That'll probably change. Well, the Samsung thing. I bet you I'll still trust Oculus, but I bet you I'll trust Samsung more in time. Um, so yes, that's why I believe that the Oculus CV1 won't be locked down. Uh, okay, and the, the last thing, and this is actually more of an insult to me by Slash here. Um, he, I pointed out that the reason that the second half of my previous video was just clips and screenshots of the Gear VR in action and just me talking over it because I was limited by my technology. Uh, I have uh, 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 some mirror thing that I can't remember the name of. It's, the, it's screen mirrored. It's called screen mirrored on the phone. But what it is, is it connects to a little Netgear black box that I have, and the Netgear black box connects via HDMI to my TV. So I can output what's on my phone to my TV. Uh, it works surprisingly well. It works significantly better on the Note 4 than it did on the Nexus 4, probably because the Note 4 is more powerful than the Nexus 4. And its Wi-Fi is actually significantly more powerful as the Note 4 can access the wireless streaming and the Wi-Fi network simultaneously, whereas the Nexus 4, you had to choose. You could either connect to the wireless streaming or you can connect to the Wi-Fi, and that was it. The Note 4 does both, which is really sweet considering I use XBMC on it and I run it over the network. So I can actually, I don't have to have a Raspberry Pi running RASPBMC attached to my TV. Um, however... That's not what I was trying to do. What I was trying to do was record what was coming out of the HDMI. Now, HDMI has a little thing called HDCP, and that stands for High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection. 
So it's DRM for HDMI. And what HDCP does is it like audits every single device between the source and the destination. And if it does not comply with the HDCP standard, it does not output video. Okay, so uh, my uh, Netgear device obviously supports HDCP. My TV obviously supports HDCP. The video capture hardware, the Hop Hodge HD DVR PVR2, whatever the f gets called, uh, does not by design support HDCP. And that's because the capture card does exactly what the HDCP is supposed to be preventing. So if my Netgear supports HDCP and expects HDCP, that means I'm not going to be able to record it. Okay, so that's the limitation of my technology. Uh, get back to that list. Uh, Slash points out that uh, the mirror functioning from the Chromecast will work. Um, I do not have a Chromecast, so again, limitation of my technology. I don't have the technology to use. Uh, one. Two, I actually don't know if the Chromecast ignores HDCP. I don't have one to play with. I've never had one. I've been meaning to buy one because I mean, they're only like 35 bucks, but the Netgear thing just works better. Well, I don't know if it works better. I've never played with Chromecast. Apparently Chromecast can actually connect to the Wi-Fi and can stream stuff so you can turn off your phone but still be watching stuff on TV. I don't know. I've never played with one. I should probably pick one up at some point. That might be another video that I make. Um, so I can use that but I don't have one, so it's a limitation of my technology. Uh, all share cast dongle or newer Samsung smart TV. Hmm, now that's a, that's, a, that's a problem. The all share cast dongle, yes, okay, that's a dongle I could plug into my uh, PVR. Uh, but smart TV and connect to, yeah, Samsung TVs and smart TVs. That defeats the entire purpose of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to record what's coming up on the screen, not what's coming up on the TV. So unless you want one of those stupid ass shaky cams where it's just recording a bunch of pixels because I'm pointing at a screen, no, no, that, that defeats the entire purpose of what I'm trying to do. Um, that is most definitely a limitation of the technology uh, because that's built into as a limitation of the technology if I'm connecting directly to my TV. Um, yes, I do know that Samsung smart TVs can connect to my phone. My dad has a Samsung Smart TV and a Samsung S3 or something like that. I don't know. And he uses it all the time. So I know it can do that, but it doesn't do what I need it to do. Uh, okay, Slash continues to go on about a piece of software called Easy Screen Recorder that allows you to record the screen at 720p at 60 frames per second. Um, I did a lot of research, probably about two hours looking into different screen recording software. There's a lot, and I mean a lot, of screen recording software out there. Most of the screen recording software required Root or required Lollipop. Now, I've already gone over why I won't root my phone. Not yet, anyways. Uh, Lollipop is not available for the Note 4. I don't think it will be available until at least next month. And I might be mixing up my information here. It's either next month or next quarter. So next month or in the next three months. I don't know when Samsung's doing that. I don't think they know when Samsung's doing that. Um, so I, m most of the software that I could find doesn't wouldn't work with my phone because I won't root it. Um, and the software that would work with my phone, the reviews were absolutely terrible. Uh, and I believe the Easy Screen Recorder was one of the softwares that required root. I was using an app called uh, uh, Recording or something like that. I actually forget now. I remembered it like 10 minutes ago. I don't remember it now. But uh, I used that software, and it also requires root, but it has a second way of activating. I have to plug it into the PC, and I have to run a piece of software that I down from, download from their website. Um, the phone itself has to be in debug mode. So one, I have to know how to activate the developer options. Uh, two, I have to activate debug mode. Three, I have to run the software. And then only when it tells me to, I plug in my phone. 
Now, I've had debug enabled on my phone for a while because I use the USB port to output video. I have a piece of software on uh, Steam that lets me record video coming out of the USB port using the debug mode. Uh, so I had to completely uninstall all of the drivers that, it, that are associated with that so I could install the drivers that are associated with this software. Now, I did read the reviews on them and a lot of people have had problems, but this came highly recommended from somebody who was, who did record the Gear VR. He said it worked fairly well. Um, so I went with it because I figured this guy already recorded the Gear VR and that's exactly what I would do. And it's not like the hardware is different. The hardware is exactly the same. Uh, he, there was a few stipulations that he actually gave the specific settings you need to do. You need to disable Bluetooth and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and then you can get decent frame rate. Uh, you also have to disable audio, uh, the audio recording. And I did all that. Uh, the exact same settings, and it recorded great. It recorded beautifully until it started using the full 3D rendering. So when it was actually rendering 3D, it started having a problem with the encoding. It would start to speed up and slow down. Um, so it would really, really screw up with audio sync. Uh, and I was recording audio with this thing, and this thing has never had a problem rec with audio sync. So it, it just, it didn't work. Um, but that's how I got the video for it. The, 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 for the last video, uh, I used that software, but it didn't work with the audio. So I trashed it. Um, yeah, so it doesn't work. It's, it's, it's because the, it's a phone, not a PC, uh, no matter what is in this little tiny itty bitty thing, even if that second CPU that's in here is a GPU and it's not very detailed on what that second CPU actually is, uh, if it is actually a GPU, uh, it's still absolutely nothing compared to the two freaking video cards I have SLI'd in my gaming rig right now. Uh, so I can record 720p video using Fraps with absolutely zero problems. Uh, I don't lose any frames. I just have a workhorse goddamn PC. The phone, however, is a phone. It is not nearly as powerful. So it's expected that it's going to have problems recording it. I actually kind of expected not to find any screen recording software. I was honestly surprised to find any, let alone any as many as I did. Um, I'm, I'm actually hoping that when we get Lollipop, that these softwares will work better because apparently Lollipop has the hooks built in to do screen recording. That's why a lot of these th uh, things say you either have to have rooted or you have to have Lollipop because Lollipop apparently has upped its features. So hopefully it will work better. Um, so yeah, <laughs> interesting things. Um, but then at the very end, Slash tax on. Sorry, but the limit is not the technology, but the one who uses it. Yeah, I think I've gone through very clearly how it's a limitation of the technology I have. And it is a limitation of technology because I don't have the technology to do what I need to do. Um, and to be 100% honest, I don't know if the technology exists. I'm not going to go out and buy a Chromecast right now just for this because... I don't really have a use for the rest of the damn thing. I'm not going to spend them. I'm not going to waste the money doing one thing with a Chromecast. Um, but yes. Okay. So, uh, technical limitations caused video recording problems. However, I tried to be as detailed as I could and obviously I didn't do all that well. So thus we have this video and I believe at this point I was as clear as physically possible and my throat is killing me. So I'm going to end the video here, and I'm going to apologize for the asininely long video. And I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.